Hi, once you have installed the Penguin slider, you can see that you have two new elements inside your Weebly sidebar. You got Penguin animations and Penguin slider. So let's set up a slider. Once you add the element on the page, you can see that there is a link with some, uh, some instructions, some tutorials, but you can access more tutorials from the dashboard, more on that later. So now that we have our settings board, you can see you have a slider dashboard. You have here the, to choose the amount of slides you want. And also if you want to use an image slider only. Do know that penguin animations are not compatible with the image only slider. This is only for when the slider is set to default as it is now for to animate elements that are uh, dropped inside your slider. So as a content slider. So let's uh, leave this to three, for example, but you can change the settings here and let's have a look at the slider dashboard. So once you access your slider dashboard, you can see that you can also access some additional tutorials by clicking here at the right top on the boy icon, icon and it will take you to some uh, additional, an additional page where you get instructions if you're stuck. And remember that you can always get in touch as well if you get some issues or other questions about it. And also note that there can be some differences in between the preview you can see here and the actual slider on your site. So first of all, how does this work? Well, we got here our main menu. In our main menu, you can switch between the different uh, types of settings that you can uh, modify. So you got the backgrounds, the effects, dimensions, arrows and dots. These are your arrows, these are your dots, and the dimensions you can see right now here. You got a preview, with, which is a representation of the browser window height. You can see those guidelines here. You got a representation of your window content width, which uh, can be uh, which can be different, of course, from yours, but it's just to have an ID. And this is, of course, the width of your screen, of your viewport. The window of the screen is being viewed at. So let's have a look and upload some images or some colors. So you can choose to, uh, when you switch here between your slides, you can see that the slides are changing and then for each slide added, you can modify a background or an image. So if you would change the background here, you can see that color here applying and that would be your color for your first slide. But let's go with an image slide, for example. And then you have more options and you can upload an image So when you upload your image, you can see that it is here and you get some additional options where you can set, for example, use a overlay. If you want to use an overlay, you can set its gradient and of course its color. You can set here the opacity value by using the slider at the bottom, just like that. And now let's add, change our second slide and upload an image as well. For this one, I'm not going to use a, an overlay. So let's go to the third slide and upload the third image as well. Just like that. Also remember that when you click on done, nothing of your settings will be saved. So you do need to click on save. So if you get some issues or whatever, then or you want to restart, make sure to not click on save and click on done and you will be taken again to your uh, Weebly editor. I'm going to click on save and then on done and then you can see that the images here are applied. Do note again that they are background images so they do not work exactly the same as, uh, as uh, normal images but more. For effects, for the effects section let's go and let's check the transition. Also, when you in the left sidebar, you get your index, so you can click on all the things without having to scroll down in the sections, uh, in the settings to see what is each thing for. So you can click on interval and then it will highlight those things. For transition, you can choose between fade or slide. Remember that when you choose fade, that it won't be visible inside your, uh, the fade effect won't be visible in your editor. It will be a slide uh, transition, but on the live side, it will be like this. You also got these small little uh, info icons that you can hover and then you got a tooltip coming up with some additional info. So it's always good to check that out as well. 
The transition speed is in milliseconds, of course. You can also set your uh, slider to autoplay, and then you can choose between the timing between each slide that each slide needs to transition. For the zoom effect, you can either zoom in your background image or zoom out your background image or just turn it completely off. So let's put it, leave it to zoom in, for example. You can also put a zoom velocity. The zoom factor will be 1.35 for zoom in as well as for zoom out. So let's, for example, add a slower zoom time on this. This is a value in seconds. And now let's head over to dimensions. You can see slider outer. When you go to slider outer, you can see that you can set your slider to full width. And again, it is strongly recommended, and I will show you later why, to use the, when you use a full width slider, to use a separate section element from Weebly. So let's put that to full width. You can choose your minimum height. The minimum height here is not going to uh, show any example in the preview. You can also set your slider to um, have a minimum height of at least the screen, uh, one screen you're looking at. So when you set that, you can see that here in your representation of your window height, the slider will occupy at least the height of your sc one screen being viewed at. I'm gonna turn that off. Inside you got your slider content. This is here is a representation of what your slider content is. In this case, it won't change it. It's the maximum width that your content can have. In this case, I set it to 960 pixels. If you want that to be full width, you just add a very high number. Then you get some vertical padding, which will extend the padding on the top and the bottom of your content. Then some horizontal padding, which will uh, take your content inwards. You can also align your content. So for each slide, content will start at the top, at the center, or at the bottom. I'll leave it at the center. And then for mobile, you can also leave that so it reduces all those paddings to a minimum so that the paddings aren't that large. Or you can say that preserve all those settings as being set on desktop. Now going to the arrows. Again, you can choose here if you're looking for something specific for a style. You can see you have here 10 arrows to choose from. Although it's only 10 arrows, you can really style them to match uh, almost any need. So for example, let's pick this one. Let's change our arrow size to 25, for example. The arrow color, and you can also change your opacity of the, uh, of the arrow, of course. I'm going to set that to white. You can see that there is a small box behind the arrow as well. You can also modify that. So let's set that to 45, for example, and the width a little bit taller, 35. And you can change again as well that box color, set now to width, uh, to width, to black. And again, here you can also change the opacity. You can add a border if needed to your uh, to your arrow as well. And for this border, you can also choose a color and again, the opacity. If you want to make your box uh, like I have a rounded corners, then you can add a border radius value to it in pixels. If you want completely rounded arrows so that your box is rounded, you need, of course, to set your width and your height to the same value and then add add a uh, pixel value just like that. Now 35 is a bit small maybe for here, so let's put it to 45 just like that. And then you get also of course the hover styles. As you can see you have a border color for hover, you have a box color and an arrow color and with all the opacities as well. For the or arrow offset you can move those arrows away from the side or move them inwards or outwards. You can choose whether to hide the arrows entirely or only hide the arrows when being viewed on mobile devices. For dots, it goes the exact same way. You can change those colors for hover and active. You can change the height of the dot. You can change the width of the dot. You can modify its border thickness, the color, set its opacity of the border color. 
you can give a border radius. If you want square dots, you just leave that to zero. For the hover and active, you can see that it has, let's set it to a green color. We're not going for styles right now, it's just an example. You can add spacing, additional spacing between your dots. You can choose whether to put your dots on top of your slider or right under your slider. And then again, you can also entirely remove the dots or only remove the dots when being viewed on mobile. So now that we've got all our settings, let's save that, click on done. And then you can see now we have a full width slider right here with a slow zoom in effect. So now moving on, uh, you can see that now that the slider is occupying the full width of this section, when I would be adding a, a new element here, you can see that it starts at the left of my page. And this is probably something you want to avoid. So how do you fix this? Well, you can use a new section element. And then you just start there. And you can see that there is no padding or anymore on that older section. Or you could have started, of course, like if you already had your page, you just create a new section for your slider and then you drop it inside there. Now for the elements, you can use penguin animations right here. When you drop in a penguin animation element, you can see the box right here. And let's add a title to it. And let's click on fade in from top. And let's have a look to fade this in on top. So once you add your element, you can see that the content area of your slider has a blue uh, dashed border. When you hover your element that has animations on it, you can see that there is a blue border on the top. If you click on that blue border on the top, then your animation settings will come up. Again, here are some tutorials you can check. And here are the animation element um, types you can choose from. We said here fading from top, so fading up. No, but we want to fade in down actually. Then you can also set the duration in milliseconds of the animation, and you can set an animation delay. You can choose whether to turn off the the animations for mobile and this setting here is for uh, in your editor so when you get lost or you're not really sure which element is uh, or which in this case which title belongs to which animation element you can highlight it and then you can see that it becomes green highlighted this is only visible of course in your editor this is not going to affect your life side so now that we have this let's add one other element right here penguin animation and let's drop in some text just like that click on the blue line again for accessing the animation and let's set that to bouncing down Let's give it a little bit of, uh, let's leave it to one second, but let's give it a delay of one second as well. So a thousand milliseconds, just like that. <coughs> Note that the animations are, uh, you can see them, but but they're, they will be visible. There is a small difference between the live site and the editor, of course. So in uh, regarding the visibility of the element when the slide is being transitioned so once we have a look at the live side you can see that it fades in and that it goes right there and then when we go back it's not visible until the element is being animated so that's uh, you can add as many animation elements to your page as you like as is to your page, to your uh, any of your slides. And uh, they will fade in and you can play with the delay so you can create some nice effects, of course, of the, for your slider. Now let's have a look and quick look to the, when a slider, when an image slider is being used. So when you choose image slider, 
you can see right here that it automatically takes those images from the from the uh, background images so if you want to upload another t image you gotta go again to your slider dashboard and then you can see that there is a lot of things that you cannot use anymore you cannot use an overlay anymore the effects of the background zoom are not working anymore you can still choose your transition of course and you can only set your slider to full width there is no minimum height anymore and the content either because content is not being used on top of the image itself you can still like i said set it to full width of course or to boxed let's set it to box for example and you can of course style your arrows and dots the same way as you did before so let's save that and go out and as you see first it was full width so the slider image was extending the width of the page right now it is just only extending to the width of your content so what is the difference uh, uh, another thing as well in case you would want to link each slide of your image this is something that's only possible with the image slider you just paste in your url here and each image ca image can also have an alt tag this is good for seo so strongly recommended to add this to at least uh, each image you upload so now when we have a look at the slider you can see that it looks different but now our images will always be displayed in its full width and full height uh, the way you have uploaded them so it is also recommended that when you use the image slider that you use images of the same ratio and preferably of the same size as well so that your image slider looks consistent when when moving through it so let's have a quick look here and see what happens when you resize the browser you can see that your image always remains visible at the same exact ratio as you uploaded your image this is not the same for when you get a background image of course because background image is trying to fill the content sorry i need to check it here first set that back to content slider like that I want to also preserve yeah, also when switching to things you do of course need to uh, recreate your slides so don't be just playing around with it just test first what what the, the ideas of your slider 